Hey, what up, guys? Coming to you this morning with the preview for Javante Davis versus Leo Santa Cruz, or should I say Leo Santa Cruz versus Javante Davis. Um, either way is fine because this is a very unique matchup here. Um, you know, part of my big fights where I'm, you know, talking about the big fights that are going to happen, just breaking those down, giving kind of a preview of what we're going to see. The predictions ain't going to come today. The full-on breakdown won't come today. Those will come in probably early September. Um, no, actually be early October when I actually, excuse me, um, we'll break that fight down and what each guy needs to do to win and what they, what, you know, my prediction and overall, everything like that. But this is kind of give you a rundown, you know, one, the fight just got announced last week. So kind of touch on what everybody's talking about right now. You know, we've got about three months, um, you know, until the fight happens. Uh, this is a fight that's been brewing all year. They've been talking about it. Um, let's, uh, jump in and see, uh, why this fight so exciting well first off I mean potentially for the talent that these guys have I'm excited but coming into the fight I'm not very excited uh, in terms of how these guys are coming into this fight um, you know let's start with the favorite which is Gervonta Davis um, why I'm not excited coming into this fight with Davis and what he's been doing well Davis let, let's take a look you know I mean one what has he really done so far if you look at his resume, Davis, yeah, impressive, 23 and 0, 22 knockouts. But he hasn't really done shit, let's be honest. He hasn't beaten anybody significant outside of Jose Pedraza a couple years ago at 130 when he captured his first belt. Actually, I think that was um, way back in 2017. Um, you know, so it's been over three years since his most significant win. And Pedraza at the time, it was an impressive win for Davis, but at the time it was like, well, this dude was kind of a, a one-off champion. He'd only won a couple fights with the world title in Pedraza. Pedraza went on to beat Rocky Martinez in 2018 and then lost to Vasily Lomachenko, which showed a lot of heart in that fight. So that's the only reason why Pedraza is even significant at all. So Davis, still young, still, you know, got a lot of promise, but hasn't really done much in my opinion. And so... Um, you know, and then even in his last bout, uh, you know, against Yuri Urkis Gamboa, I just wasn't impressed. Gamboa is a, what, 38-year-old former world champion at featherweight, and he's fighting that lightweight for a vacant title against Davis. I thought Davis just would have destroyed Gamboa, and Gamboa even broke his ankle, but Davis struggled with weight to make 135. It was just an ugly performance, in my opinion. Davis didn't throw a lot of punches. He very much so reminded me of Adrian Broner and the way Broner fights, you know, um, which all the talent in the world with Broner too, but doesn't really, um, let his hands go. And that's how Davis fought the last one. He got lucky that he stopped, uh, Gamboa because a decision really would have made him look bad. So, you know, Davis's potential is through the roof. I think talent wise, the guy's got it. Does he have the focus? Does he have the determination? And he's going to need it in this fight because he's fucking fighting at 130 pounds, a weight that he's missed twice in his career already. Um, he missed it on the, the Mayweather-McGregor undercard. He missed weight and was stripped of his IBF title, the one that he took from Pedraza. You know, he missed it again not long, not long, um, I think, was it 2019 he missed it, I believe. And, uh, or 2018, I'm sorry. And... And then, you know, he had trouble making 135. Well, Santa Cruz put his foot down. This fight's taking place at 130. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know if we're going to get the best Tank Davis um, on October 24th. I hope we do. I hope he comes in focus. It's the biggest fight of his career by far. And two world titles are on the line. Now, that's the other interesting thing here is they're fighting at 130, but um, Davis is champ at 135, so... Both the belts will be on the line, the lightweight belt and the junior lightweight belt. So that makes it interesting. Now, Leo Santa Cruz, why I'm not really excited on his side of it coming into this fight is what has Santa Cruz fucking done since he beat Carl Frampton back in 2017 in their rematch? And the, the answer is nothing. He hasn't done anything. You know, I understand. Don't get me wrong. I, I am totally sympathetic and I understand that his dad had, uh, I think, believe his dad had leukemia and was, you 
you know, he, his, his inactivity has been widely known because of that. But who has he beaten? He beat Abner Mades, who hadn't done anything since their first fight in 2015. He beat him in a rematch. I felt he should have knocked Mades out in the second fight. I wasn't surprised that he beat Mades. It was a good fight, but he beat him the first time. I wasn't surprised he beat him the second time. You know, so I, I like Leo Santa Cruz. I think the talent's there. Throws a lot of punches. He can take punches. But at 130, I didn't see a lot of power from him at 126. Now he's fighting at 130. And, you know, he made a couple guys last year look better than they should have looked because I don't know if he was overlooking them or whatever the reason is, but I just don't think he's he's coming in. I think he's, yeah, I think it has a lot to do with him overlooking the guys, but he just hasn't been overly impressive to me and dominant against lower level competition. So again, I like Leo, Leo Santa Cruz. I like him a lot. I always have, but I'm just, I haven't seen that fire, that passion, that um, dominance to call yourself the best in any division um, lately out of Santa Cruz. So coming into the fight, potentially, it's a great matchup. Two talented fighters. Um, you know, Santa Cruz more of the veteran. Davis on the rise. Who's going to step up and take the reins? And are they going to seriously take the reins? Are they going to come out and dominate this fight? Is it going to be an emphatic win? You know, a staple win. A, a, I'm fucking here. Let's fight type of win to the rest of the division. Um, because really, they're putting two divisions on notice fighting each other right here they're putting 130 and they're putting 135 on notice that's those are top ranked divisions in terms of the top guys you got Miguel Burchell at the top of 130 right now very good reigning world champion and then you got 135 Vasily Lomachenko Lomachenko wants the names he wants Davis he would want Santa Cruz if Santa Cruz beats Davis these guys if they want a big fight with Lomachenko and it can be worked out Al Heyman and and Bob Arum have been talking and working shit out since Wilder and Fury. They're fighting again to Wilder and Fury. These guys worked out a co uh, a co pay per view last time out. So um, you know where they were had their matchups going against each other, where they were throwing guys. You know um, they had the main event against each other. Then one guy got PBC, the next guy got top rank. These guys are more than willing to throw their guys against each other. And that's what I want to see. Lomachenko versus the winner of this would be fucking huge. And Lomachenko be down. He's not more. He's not overly concerned about world titles anymore. He's more concerned about fighting the best and the biggest names. And Davis, he wants to get to that point, that Lomachenko fight. This is his opportunity. Santa Cruz wants to prove to everybody that he can compete still at the highest level. He needs to do it here because he hasn't done anything really, in my opinion, since he beat Carl Frampton in terms of a really significant victory. And that was to get revenge for his only defeat. So Davis is the favorite coming in. Santa Cruz, they're fighting at 130. That, in my opinion, that makes this fight closer. I think it is a, um, a, a good matchup, and I'm, I can't wait to see it. October 24th, pay-per-view. The undercard is not set yet. I believe we're going to get a good undercard, though. I think Al Heyman knows he has to stack these undercards if he's going to ask people uh, during the pandemic to pay money to see these fights. Plus, you know, Davis and, and Santa Cruz are big names in boxing, but overall, are they big names? Have they taken, are they household names where, where people are going to pay for them to fight? I think Al Heyman knows he needs to stack these undercards. Don't be surprised if we see somebody like Badu Jack and in a rematch with Jean Pascal, stuff like that. That's just a prediction because Badu Jack and Pascal fat fought their first fight on Davis's undercard against Gamboa last year on Showtime. This is pay-per-view now. I think they would be down for that. And I think he needs to stack it with a very good co-feature that people are going to be into. That first fight was great between Jack and Pascal. That's just my bold prediction right there. But make sure you're paying attention October 24th on pay-per-view. I will give my breakdown, my full-on breakdown, what each guy needs to do to win the fight, um, who I think is going to win the fight, um, and what's going to happen if they win the fight. I'll be making that, that all those predictions and my opinions and all that stuff um, in early October, a few weeks before the fight takes place. So that's it, guys. That's the preview and the announcement of the 
double title fight, 130, 135 world title fight between Gervonta Davis and Leo Santa Cruz, the two world champions right now. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed it. True boxing, you've been hit with the truth.